got another Joe Hobbies down in Spring, Texas. I'll make a quick video on uh, working with this Lexan ABS clear plastic, whatever you want to call it. Um, I looked online trying to find some, you know, I'd cut this stuff before and used a plethora of different ways to cut it and uh, successful, unsuccessful. You look online though, because uh, uh, let me let me give you a, a quick background of what I'm trying to do. Uh, it's cold here in Texas for two days, and those two days I don't want to run with cold air in my face on my fairing. My fairing plastic uh, windshield's not tall enough, so I ordered this little guy here, and it's just uh, all about a six-inch extension, and it works on these really cool little ratcheting lever systems that clamps down on your existing glass and so first thing uh, I would probably say is don't buy smoked even if it matches the one that you got on your bike because you can't see through it at night unless you know if you just ride in the day it'd be okay but at night time it'll blind you problem was is it's too narrow my uh, my fairing windshield is probably a third wider than this so it, it just looked cheap but I really like the concept so I figure well all I need to do is find me like an old windshield cut the top of it off of it and it will match the shape of my windshield and I can go back clear so that being said I ordered a cheap I think it was a $25 13 inch windshield and uh, this is a portion of it and I want to show you how I cut this and uh, how it came out. So basically what I was wanting to do was I was going to take this thing here and I wanted to make it larger. I wanted to make it taller. I wanted to make it wider so it would fit the existing windshield. And the final product is right here. I don't know how you're going to, if you're going to see that very well and clear. Here, look at this glass but um, all the edges came out real real nice uh, I still got to do a little polishing but uh, all in all it came out really nice man and we didn't damage it or anything uh, in the process now uh, the first hurdle that I jumped across was of course being scared to cut it so what did I cut it with first thing I did was I took and uh, found out where I wanted to cut and I, I made my mark uh, with some little dots and then I came back and I placed this tape uh, at those dots and this little um, thin cutting wheel on your Dremel you don't want to run it at full speed but you don't want to run it real slow either probably about 75 percent of its capabilities and I found a way where I could keep my hand rested um, wrapped around this thing here and just slowly cut just barely scoring through the tape so I didn't do a practice shot or anything everybody online says do not use a Dremel um, but a buddy of mine uses an angle grinder for everything and he can cut he could cut a Mona Lisa with angle grinder and uh, he's been so helpful with me in this last project on the bike uh, I didn't even want to ask him so I knew I was gonna have to fend for myself but the cut came out super clean it took me about six passes so the I think the key to it is not trying to cut all the way through it you just score it and the first time will be real you know uh, uh, make you pretty nervous the second time you make that cut it's not so bad uh, because the the cutting wheel will kind of kind of follow the groove and I'll do a uh, I'll do a, a another test cut here just to, so you can see what it looks like now whenever you can you want to make sure and run that shaft of whatever bit you're running in your Dremel as far in as you possibly can sometimes you got to have it out for reach but the further out that you have it uh, the more apt it's going to vibrate so on this particular one, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to recut. Um, I came in and I 
put my cut in there like that, marked on the tape. So that way if you screw up, you can just rip the tape off of it. Alright, now there's 100%. And head down just a, just a little under 100%. Now see, that tape just protected that accident. If your hand's not comfortable, you're in, in the wrong position, you got to stop and, and get there. Get where you're always comfortable. Hands got to be steady. Okay, so that would have been my first cut. Let's see how many times it takes to get all the way through. I see it's a lot faster, your second and third and fourth because you've already got that track to ride in. But you don't want to get too ballsy. I'm already through there. And keep your wheel up out of there. Don't let it, even though it goes through, don't let it go halfway in because it'll start melting and sticking. There you go, smooth as silk. So you could take a little block sander and bevel edges on both sides of that and uh, come back with a um, mid-speed buffing wheel and make that just, just clear as it came from the factory. Uh, you want to wear something over your face because this stuff will kill you. Um, I... Uh, do sometimes and I don't but at my age you know what are you holding on to right so if you can see the cut super clean super straight and we did no damage whatsoever and this painters tape comes off real real easy and you can see where I hit it a couple of times just by accident and it didn't damage it didn't damage the uh, didn't damage the glass at all so from there I had another problem my first problem was trying to figure out how to get this damn thing apart and uh, I figured uh, since I wasn't going to be able to do it without taking it apart without destroying it I broke the first one out and when I was fiddling around trying to put the other one in, I finally figured out the puzzle on how this thing that comes apart, if you ever want to take one of these apart. The trick is the locking mechanisms pull straight out and the whole thing falls apart. Um, one of the handles there that locks it, you pry it straight up, it pops out, the whole cam falls apart. Then it'll fit through this hole. So this is the hole that I was going to try to duplicate. The reason that it's like this here is unbeknownst to me. Um, it does have a round port part here. All these little steps are really unnecessary except for the fact it may give it a little bit of support side to side, but your bolts should hold it. Um, it doesn't have to be exact like that stair step. Okay. Um, what I used to cut that was this simple bit here I don't know if that's focusing if you can see that and it's just a uh, there we go just one of those little common little bits, I don't know what they call it, 
Uh, this one here, same thing. Try to run it in as close as you can. And mark your hole. Now this one you're flying solo. You don't have any tape, so if you screw up, you're going to scratch your, your, your job. And again, it's not open, all wide open all the way. Just come in from the bottom at an angle. And always make sure that you got the tool tight and the glass tight. And it's always best to try to cut on the left side of the bit. Does that make sense? The, the motor's rotating this way. You want to cut on that side of the bit, not on the right side. And I think the, the trick here is not to go fast. You know, when I say cutting on the left side of the bit, what I mean is going, uh, you want to always make your cut counterclockwise. And the tool just seems to cut better that way. Okay, now I've got the basic cut taken, cut out of it. Now I can go back in at a slight angle. Just barely go around and touch the top, and it'll take off all the excess plastic that's hanging on. Because that's where it hangs on. It hangs on. It'll remelt right on the edges. And it's a real easy and efficient way to cut through the plastic. So the way I cut the rest of this basically really was by eye. Um, I had a straight cut along here. And I took this here and looked kind of at the design of it and laid it down and, and actually laid that right on there and drew a line as far as it would go. And then took a ruler and made it kind of straight. I cut these corners off to kind of, you know, so it didn't come down square like this here. It was all really done kind of by eye. Now, I am guilty uh, of using my uh, table belt sander. Uh, to smooth right inside these turns here, but I could have just as well done it with this here. It just it, this was, would have took, taken a little bit longer. So uh, that's my project. It's pretty easy to do. I think if you, uh, I think you can build anything in a world with a Dremel if uh, you put your mind to it. It's just a fantastic little tool, and it's great to have around the house. Um, have you got any cool? Uh, ABS or, or uh, Lexan projects, man, I'd love to see them because this stuff is really fun to work with. You can put uh, LED lights along the edge of this, man, and the whole thing will glow that color. Keeping that in mind, think of all the cool things that you can do. Anyway, enough for today. Y'all have a good one.